Hello you guys, it's Kaylee here with Embrace the Adventure and today I'm coming at you with a video that's hopefully going to be super helpful. So whether you are RVing full time or thinking about starting that journey or you're a weekend camper, whatever your case may be, this video is going to have everything that is absolutely essential to get you on the road and going in the right direction. <laughs> um, we have been a full-time RVing family since October, so roughly seven months, as you'll notice the AC kicked on. We have 44 feet, um, so there's no quiet place to film, so it's fine. This is RV life, right? It's okay. Um, so we've been full-timing since October, about seven months, and then before that, we were RVing on the weekends, um, almost every single weekend, so this list is just everything you need from outside to inside just to hit the road. It's not going to have any fluff as I would call it. This is just the absolute essentials. You can go out and buy right now and then just hit the road and be in good shape. So if you're interested in seeing everything that is absolutely essential, at least in my opinion, stay tuned. First thing. So the first thing we really noticed while RVing is a lot of campgrounds do not allow you to wash your RV on site. We're struggling to find like how in the world do we maintain our RV without, you know, upsetting the campground or having to bust out water every time. And Aero Cosmetics has a wash and wax all in one. It's a blue spray, but this is just a waterless wash. You can use it on your RV, on your truck, on your boat, on your motorcycle. You can actually use it in your RV as well, like on glass appliances. It's just this wonder product. Um, we have bought it, I think we've gone through five orders now, um, and we see other people use it as well, but it's amazing for your maintenance washes, for just cleaning off areas, um, if there's like dust spots, dirt spots, if you just need to do a whole wash. Um, our whole RV takes about 45 minutes to an hour. We use it on our windows, we use it to clean our AC units, we use it on the tires, like we use it everywhere. Um, so that is the number one thing that is so nice to have in our flow through storage. We just pull that out, grab the, um, there's a mop that you can buy, um, the extension mop. So it extends up so you do not need a ladder, which is amazing. So that eliminates the need for a ladder while you're washing your rig. Um, so yeah, the expandable mop um, and then the blue wash and wax all spray. It's a game changer, it's amazing, and it allows you to keep your rig looking sparkly and new whenever you want. Now, keeping with the theme of outside, so you absolutely have to have leveling blocks. Now, whether you go with those um, bright orange, they're called Lynx leveling blocks, um, you can buy them at Walmart. That's what we started with, with our first rig. So we use those, it's always nice to have those in your flow through storage or wherever you keep your tools because you never know when or where you're going to need them. My preference personally are the curved leveling blocks. Um, I believe that they're a lot easier to navigate. You're not stacking and checking, stacking and checking kind of thing. You, um, it's just kind of a smoother process all around. So, so X chalks. <laughs> Chalking your tires is so important. Uh, making sure that you are stable and secure in your RV is direly important. So the X chocks just allow that extra pressure on your tires so you are just extra safe and secure. And along with that X chalk, I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna do it again. X chalk. So <laughs> along with those X chocks, um, just chalking your tires in general um, and make sure too that you are doing rubber and not plastic tire chocks. This is very important because they, if you do the plastic ones, they can skid on the pavement. So poop hose. Poop is important when you're an RVer. You just have to deal with it. So the Rhino collapsible, I call it a poop hose. I'm sure it has a more glamorous name, but we'll call it a poop hose because we'll, we're close like that, right? We can just, yeah, we'll have that, that conversation. So this one expands up to, I believe, 15 feet. Um, I'm not sure on that, but it's, it's long. It's, it's plenty long for wherever you're going to park. Um, and then it collapses down to almost nothing. And that is key because storage is everything. You want everything you can to collapse as small as possible. So there's plenty of room and you're not all busting out everywhere. Um, and on with that, you wanna make sure you guys, cause I've seen this so many times um, where people have their poop hose just kind of like flopped on the ground and then going upward to the spout. And when you're poop, you have to think of it, it's a gravity-based ordeal. So when you're you're dumping your black tank, you know, the poop 
can't really all drain out going upward. That doesn't really work. So the poop slinky, as we call it, and I'll insert everything, um, it goes underneath your poop hose and it kind of like supports it in this motion. So your poop hose, while you're dumping, it's just gonna kind of help everything glide out and drain if that makes sense. So you need to have both of those. So with your Rhino collapsible poop hose or whatever else you find that collapses, that's the key. Um, you wanna have that um, that support system underneath. It's just literally, it's for your poop hose to sit on so everything drains out more smoothly. You're not gonna have any backups or you don't want that. That's gross, right? Yes, okay. So keeping with the outside theme, one more thing. Yes, one more thing. So with water hose, when we first started, you guys, we hit so many times where we were getting frustrated because we didn't have enough water hose. Make sure you have enough. And then if you're traveling in cold climates, make sure you have a, or a heated water hose um, and that does help. Um, and again, just a note, if you're camping in colder temperatures, this does not apply to you. If you're camping in warm temperatures, good for you. Wear the same, love the sun. But if you're camping in cold temps and you are getting consistently below freezing, make sure you have a spigot cover as well. Because if even if you have the heated hose, um, it's usually the spigot that freezes. And yeah, heated hose and a spigot cover, make sure it's insulated and also just wrap it up as well um but yeah spigot protect the spigot i'd say more so than the hose but yeah that's just applying to you if you're camping in the cold make sure you have a water pressure regulator with a water pressure regulator it just makes sure that you're getting the right pressure for your rv it's making sure the pressure is not too much or too low and you can actually adjust it that way um so sometimes you know before we had one of those um i mean water pressure was bananas it's just crazy so it's nice to have that regulator just so you're always in a safe zone. Um, back to the poop talk, make sure outside you have a box of um, like medical gloves, like those, um, the, like if I had one, I'd snap it because I feel like that's what, okay, I'm sorry. But those blue like doctor gloves, make sure you have those, just the disposable ones. Um, and you, we get ours on Amazon. Um, you wanna make sure that you are never touching your poop hose barehanded. I've seen people do it and it's just, you know, don't do that. Don't be, don't be that guy. Don't be that girl. Put on those gloves. Nasty. So yes, we have separate totes for our poop hose, separate totes for our water hose, keeping everything separate, making sure everything is nice. And then ever so often, make sure you are spraying out those bins with, um, we use uh, Clorox, just dis disinfectant spray. Just make sure everything is staying as clean as possible. And then keeping with this theme of poop, um, we have tried a lot of different chemicals, you guys. Every chemical you've seen at the store, um, everything on Amazon, we have tried everything. And there are two that are our favorites. So Happy Camper is used by a lot of RVers. We have seen it um, all over the place in forums, on Facebook groups, things like that. Um, we love Happy Camper. We did not have any type of smell issues. The only issue we had with Happy Camper was when we were dumping, we were seeing some like clots of toilet paper. It wasn't fully breaking everything down. Um, so we switched to the one that is now our top runner and that's the Well Acceptic Saver. It's actually used for porta potties, um, things like that. And our first thought was, dude, if it's used in porta potties, it's gotta be good stuff because those places are what nightmares are made of, right? So we have switched to that and now when we dump, there's um, nothing, there are no clumps of anything, and that's so good. And I will say, because we recommended this product to my father-in-law, and he said the first time he used it, he had a horrible smell, and it will do that because it's cleaning your tanks. So if you had any buildup, if the chemical you're using before is not doing the job, or if you're just using water or something like that, the first couple times you use this product, the Well Acceptic Saver, it can produce a pretty gnarly smell because it's cleaning out. It's like doing a full deep clean of your tank. So the first couple times can smell bad. So just be aware of that. But after that, you'll be all clean and ready and good to go. So we absolutely love this product. Um, it comes out blue and it's, you don't want to touch it with your bare hands. And that's the kind of product I want. I want all the chemicals in the world to clean out the poop because it's in your tanks. You want your tanks to be clean. So um, just make sure you're following the directions on the back to a T. Um, I believe you fill up the bowl of water, like in the toilet, let it sit for one minute. We set a one minute timer and then we flush. And we also use this in our gray tanks 
just to make sure everything's dissolved, you know, in case something slips through our kitchen sink or in the bathroom, probably just full of Anthony's beard hairs, but we use it everywhere. Uh, we use it in the bathroom sink, toilet, and kitchen sink. We don't use it in the shower because we're stepping in that stuff. So, but yeah, those three places we use it and it keeps everything going really smoothly. We're obsessed with it. Functional internet. So I work remotely in marketing um, for a credit union back in Indiana. Anthony works remotely in finance. So we need really great internet here. We have a really great setup. So we use mobile must have. We have a data only plan with Verizon and with T-Mobile. So if one is kind of falling short, the other one picks up. Um, we always have top speeds. We never have to worry about what a campground's Wi-Fi is. And that's something I see a lot of people who are working remotely that we talk to. They struggle so badly. They're like, oh, this campground Wi-Fi, it's lagging. And it's, we just can't have that, especially with Anthony. My work is more flexible. He has got to be logged on and getting things done more on a timeline. But when we decided to get mobile must have, um, it's just been outstanding. So what we have, and I'll have everything linked below. We're not affiliated at all. Um, but what we use works. Um, it works and we are never struggling. It feels just like when we lived at our house with like fiber internet. I mean, I would even say it's faster than that. So yeah, make sure you have reliable, reliable internet. Um, I know Starlink is something that's also very popular. Um, a lot of people use hotspots, but I would go with mobile must have or Starlink. And I, we have not personally used Starlink, um, but just going off of the people I've talked to that have it, it seems pretty great too. But yeah, mobile must have is what we use. Recommend it 10 out of 10. Um, and they do have an option where you can pay, I think it's like a hundred bucks and somebody like logs into your screen and can see your screen and they set it up. So it's like set up by a professional so you don't have to mess with all the settings and things. So I would recommend that too. But yeah, mobile must have, make sure you have reliable internet, um, especially if you're working on the road. Okay. So I forgot to mention something very important outside. So we have the watchdog surge protector. Um, it sends notifications to us whenever there's any issue. Um, it'll automatically shut off if things are unsafe. And my favorite thing about this, but we have a dog. And so this will notify us if, you know, the power's off or something like that, because we need our power on, obviously, you know, especially if there's a pet inside. Um, so it's just been the greatest like peace of mind. I would definitely get a surge protector. It's going to protect your unit. It's gonna turn off automatically if anything is unsafe. It's gonna send notifications to your phone. It's just an awesome thing to have. I definitely think it's an absolute necessity. Okay, so let's talk about tools. And so like when we started out, we had way too many. We had so many tools we were not using and I definitely would not recommend packing everything but the kitchen sink and your and your underflow storage it's just takes up space so make sure your toolkit is full of things you're going to use all the time so the things that we use the most headlamp is number one it's used at least three four times a week it's the most convenient thing i made fun of anthony when he mentioned it um back when he wanted to get the first one but we have used that for years tried and true one of the best things you can get as an rv -er, i'm telling you um and then you'll need a small ladder. Um, it's just nice to have that small ladder. We use it inside all the time. Um, Anthony uses it to change out our air filters. He uses it to do various projects. So a small ladder um, is always nice to have. Okay, and then back in the tools, you guys, just make sure you have the basics. We have an assortment of screws and nails that's been great. You know, you need a drill. We have a small table saw because we're, you know, like we used it to build the bunks and things. So we use that for projects. Um, we have a, um, just a basic toolkit full of like different uh, drill attachments. Um, yeah, your screwdriver, just things like that, you know, just basic tools and then just anything that you're finding yourself using kind of frequently, make sure that's in your kit, but don't go crazy. Yeah, don't go crazy. <laughs> and then air purifiers and dehumidifiers. This especially goes for you if you are RVing in the south or anywhere near the water, anywhere that's kind of humid. Right now we are RVing in Texas and we're in Galveston Island, so it is very humid here. My hair's probably grown like two inches. Every time I look, it's like, it's gonna be out of frame. It's humid. So we have two dehumidifiers. Yeah, it's important um, we have one right next to me and it's right between our washer and dryer and our bathroom. So it catches all of that. And we have a really big one on the floor and we have that kind of 
right by our kitchen island by the front door. So it's going to capture that humidity that comes in from the door. And then our other one is going to capture anything from the washer dryer and from taking hot showers. So that's very important. And the placement is important as well. But I mean, at the end of the day, both are completely full. And our big one, it holds like this much water, like a head size. Yep. And then our little one holds like this much and they're both completely full. We have to empty them every single night. So that is very important to have. Make sure you have some sort of cordless vacuum. So even if you have the RV vacuum that, that comes with your unit, like we had like a hose vacuum that can plug in, it's a lot more work to do that than just have a little plug-in cordless vacuum that you can hurry up and clean messes with. Um, I would have a dust buster or, and or something like, I mean, this is what we have. I'm gonna insert a better video um, but yeah, this one has been outstanding. It lasts for like 20 minutes, the charge does, and it picks up awesome. And it's so lightweight and easy to stash just next to our bed. So yeah, you need a vacuum, especially if you have pets. It's so nice to have a cordless one that just charges and then you use it. There's no cord to mess around with. It's very fast. So that is very important. You guys, first aid kit. This is absolutely essential. So the one that I recommend, I got at Target and it is, I think $24, but it's organized by injury. So if your kiddo has um, a cut or a splinter or needs like butterfly stitches or like whatever the injury is, it's organized like a binder. So you don't have to waste your time looking through like, oh, he has a bug bite, let me find what I need. It's all organized for you. It's been the best thing. We've gone through three of them. It's something that you don't want to use. You don't want to have to use, but I have one inside our RV and in the truck. So if anybody's hurt, if something happens, whatever happens, we are prepared. And that is important. Um, the other things that I would recommend you guys, you need seating. Um, not all campgrounds have that picnic table or a bench for you to sit at and you don't want to be stuck standing. You want to enjoy your time. Okay, you guys. So that reaches the end of my ultimate RV starter kit. I'm sure I forgot a couple things. I've been working on this list for a while. So my brain is kind of stuck. So if I think of anything else, check that description box. I will be putting it down below along with a link. Um, at this time, we're not affiliated with any products I'm mentioning. It's just stuff that we have tried and tried and loved and loved. And I don't want you guys to waste your money. I want you guys to use products and things that work for you, work well. That's the whole goal. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please take a moment to like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Leave a comment below if you have anything that you have as a staple in your RV lifestyle, because I'd love for everybody to see what you're loving and what you would consider as an ultimate RV starter kit product. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I'm Kaylee with Embrace the Adventure and I'll catch you guys in the next video.